Well, good morning and happy Sabbath. It's good to see all of you. We praise the Lord that we can worship together and study His Word. As you can see on the screen, God does have a prophetic clock. There is a countdown that is taking place. What time is it, you may ask? We're at the end of the time of the end, my brothers. Everything is coming to pass. Everything that Jesus said would take place is taking place. All the signs and wonders, the wars, the conflicts, the divisions, the preaching of the everlasting gospel, all of these things are happening. And we're going to see that we don't have much time, not just to get this work done, but also to prepare for what is about to happen. I do want to read some scriptures uh, from Luke chapter 21, verse 36. We're told, watch ye therefore and pray how often are we supposed to be praying brothers and sisters are we praying are you praying about the situation in which our world finds itself we're talking about the end the end of the close of human probation are we getting ready are we praying about this watch therefore and pray always what are we supposed to be watching It says, watch, therefore, what are we supposed to be watching? What what is Jesus talking about? Watching what? The signs of the times that announce the coming of Jesus. Yes. We're supposed to be watching the events of the world. We're supposed to be bringing them to Bible prophecy. And we're supposed to show people what time it is where we are in human history. And what this does is we're able to give answers to people. People have questions. What's going to happen? What's going to happen in the Middle East? What's going to happen in Europe? What's going to happen throughout the world? What is taking place? The answer's there. Jesus doesn't just tell us to watch and pray, but he also gives us the answer how we can say, as it says, that we may be counted worthy to escape All these things that shall come to pass. What things? Watch what things? And what things shall come to pass? The signs of the times. Bible prophecy being fulfilled before our eyes. Yes, it's happening. You read Matthew chapter 24, Luke chapter 21. You read the signs in Revelation. My brothers and sisters, that's the headlines. You want the headlines? You want, to know what the, you want to know what the headlines are in our world? It's right here in the book of prophecy. Christ's own words. We're supposed to be watching. We're supposed to be praying about those things. What are we watching? Come on, what are we watching? The whole world's going to get ready to watch the Super Bowl. The whole world's getting ready to watch, I don't know, the Oscar nominations. You know, what, what is it? The popular television programs, soap operas. What are we supposed to be watching? What are we supposed to be praying about? We're supposed to be aware and awake to the nearness of the coming of Jesus. And we're supposed to be praying for ourselves, praying for our families that we can escape what's about to come down. We're supposed to be praying about this and supposed to be helping others to understand what is taking place. Let me read something else here. Uh, This is from Review and Herald, January 20th, 1905. It says, those who place themselves under God's control to be led and guided by him. Do you want to be under God's control? Do you want to be guided by Jesus? Or do you want to, you think you have everything under control? You think you have sufficient wisdom to guide yourself in this life. No, my brothers. So who are the people who are being led and and controlled by God? What will they do? We'll catch the steady tread of the events. What events? Prophecy. The end times. What we sing in the headline, we have to catch those things. We have to bring them to the word of God. And we have to show people where we are in history. The end of history, I should say. The events 
ordained by him to take place. Who has ordained these things? Who has laid all these things out for us? Jesus himself. He's, he's not just your savior. He's not just the coming king. He's a prophet who has prophesied all these things. Remember Jesus says, a prophet in his own home has no honor. He's a prophet. He has prophesied. He has spoken to things that are coming to pass. Listen, he spoke this world into existence. He knows how we came. He knows how this world started. He knows how it's going to end. And he has laid it all out. There's no reason to be asleep, my brothers and sisters. There's no reason for us to miss out on what's about to happen. We have to be in tune. He's laid it all out. It's all been revealed. We don't have to be ignorant of the facts on what is happening in our world and why they are happening more specifically. So who's being led by the Spirit? Who's under the control of God? Those who catch the steady unfolding prophetic events. We have to know what God is doing today. We have to know. We have to know. Here's another one. Volume 5 of the Testimonies, page 716. Let the watchmen now lift up their voice and give the message which is present truth for this time. Did you know God has a present truth? That's what the church needs today. A present truth. In every emergency, in every crisis, God has always had a present truth for this specific hour. People say, well, Jesus is present truth. There's no question about that Jesus is the, he's the author of prophecy. There's no question about that. But listen, in the days of Noah, there was a present truth at that time. And the message was, you better get in the ark. That was a present truth. And in every crisis and in every emergency, God has a specific warning that has to be understood. And what is present truth, Andy? What is present truth? We don't have to guess. We just have to read, that's all. Just read and believe what is written. And what are we told? Let us show people where we are in prophetic history. That's present truth. By connecting current events, we're going to look at some things. Yes, we're going to look at some headlines. Not because we, we just want to help pass, you know, I need, I need filler space to finish my sermon. No, my brothers, because we have to let people know where we are. We have to let them know that this world is not going to last forever and that prof prophetic events are connected with the gospel. Did you know that? Did you know that in Matthew 24, that's the signs of the times, right? Matthew 24, that's all the events. The gospel is there. Yes, the nations and the plagues and the pestilence and the division, the social unrest, it's all there. The abomination of desolation, it's there. The union of church and state, the healing of the deadly wound, it's all being laid out before us today. The foundation, the groundwork, for the mark of the beast crisis, it's all being laid out before. Maranatha, page 25. She says, soon, listen, it's not soon anymore. It's not soon no more. You know how the Bible says, Paul says, in the last days, perilous times will come. We can't say they will come. They're here, my brothers and sisters. We have to be able to, to apply the word of God. You know, that verse, perilous times shall come. You know, we could be sitting in a new Jerusalem after this earth is, is over. And that, that verse is still going to say, perilous times will come. They'll never come if we don't apply. Jesus took the, the words in the scrolls of Isaiah, he read them, and he said, this day they're fulfilled before your eyes. They didn't like that. They didn't want to hear. They wanted more time. You know, they didn't want to know that there's a present truth, there's a crisis, there's an emergency. They didn't want to hear that. They didn't want present truth. You know what they wanted? They wanted pleasant truth. You, you know what pleasant truth is? Pleasant truth. 
you're okay. We're all okay. Everyone's okay. Everyone's going to be saved. Even the devil somehow, he's, even the devil's going to be saved. Everyone, there's no one going to be lost. That's pleasant truth. Those are the words that we think the people want to hear instead of speaking the words that the church needs to hear. There's a big difference between present truth and what we hear today in the world. And so we have to apply the word. And when we're told in Maranatha soon, listen, my brother, those, it's not soon. It's now. It's today. It's here. And what's going to happen? Troubles will arise among the nations. Troubles that will not cease until when? When will the problems end? When will this world get fixed? Not until Jesus comes. You know what this means? It means they're not going to fix the crises. You know what it means? Don't put your hope on the next election. It's going to break your heart. And you'll be bitterly disappointed. My brothers and sisters, this, we can't fix the problems in this world. You know why? Because sin is a problem. That's what it is. Oh, Andy, it's, it's greed. Where do you think greed comes from? Or oh, trace it. Where do you think racism comes from? Well, it's the, my brothers, it all comes back to one thing. The carnal, sinful human nature is corrupt. And only Jesus can end that problem that we have in our life. When Jesus comes into our life, then and only then, can we begin to live a life that is pleasing and honorable to God? And I've told people this all the time. Listen, we don't have the love. I don't have the love that I'm supposed to have for you. I don't have the love I'm supposed to have for my kids and for my, for my wife. I don't have that love. But Jesus does have the love. And when he comes into my life, it's no longer my love. It's his love working in me. And then I can have something to give. I have something to offer when Christ comes. Well, guess what's going to happen to the world when Jesus comes? He'll end injustice. He'll end the poverty. He'll end the divisions. He'll bring a solution. He will establish a kingdom that will never pass away. Because what's on the heart and mind of the people today What's on the hearts and minds of people today? Just, not just this week, but this whole last year. World War III. That's what's on the hearts and minds of people. Matthew chapter 24, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Andy, but we've always had wars. There's over, at least over 2,000 world conflicts that are recognized by you know, the historians. We've had over 2,000 conflicts. There's more than that, but the ones that have been recorded and registered as official conflicts. We've always had them. We've always had them, Andy. What's, you know, everyone's always said that every year. Listen, my brothers and sisters, never in the history of our world have we been, listen, minutes, minutes away from a worldwide destruction and nuclear conflagration. The nuclear weapons that Russia has, that China has, that the United States has, and that a lot of other nations have, that they're not saying, they're not talking about it. Those nuclear weapons that they have today, not only are they faster, not only are they more destructive, we're talking about minutes away, if not for the intervention of God. If not because God is the one who's in control. Jesus says, see that she be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. In other words, as the world is concerned with anxiety and fear and, I don't know, a lot of other feelings, as, as their hearts are melting with fear, the Bible says, Jesus says, don't worry, I'm still in control. God is still on the throne. And you know, he has a work that needs to be done. That's why this world's still here. There's a gospel message that has to take place. 
And that gospel message will fulfill and accomplish its purpose. And that's the role that you and I have during this crisis. As these things are developing and happening, it's up to us to give an answer as to why and what it means. It means that Jesus is at the door. It means that he's coming again. And once this work is done, and once the third angel's message closes, once the people have been sealed, once the intercession of Christ is over and he leaves the most holy place, he says it is over, oh, my brothers and sisters, you'll see what's going to happen to this world. Our world is going to end violently. Destruction, Armageddon, you name it. The angels are commissioned to hold, 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 hold until we seal the servants of God. What were they holding? What are those winds that they're holding? Those are winds of destruction, the winds of strife. It's the restraint that God has imposed upon the hearts of men to hold and to restrain their wickedness until the gospel accomplishes its purpose. That's why we're here. That's what we're supposed to be fulfilling. That's the work that we have been given. Volume 9 of the Testimonies, page 11. The Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. The calamities by land and sea. The unsettled state of society. The alarms of war. What is the cause? Men devise all kinds of reasons as to why we're... The experts tell us why there's the conflicts. Brothers, it's God whose spirit is being withdrawn from the earth. That's what's causing the trouble. That's what's causing the anxiety. That's what's causing society to be completely ripped apart. But at the same time as this is happening, we have the everlasting gospel that will help heal the divisions if they would receive it. We have the antidote. We have the solution. We have the, we have the remedy to the problems in this world. When Christ comes in, all that sin and bitterness and hatred, it goes out. And if men would embrace the three angels' messages, if they would embrace the everlasting gospel, which is the foundation of earth's final warning, that would end. Did you know that if we would accept the message that God has given to us in Revelation 14, we wouldn't need lawyers. We wouldn't need attorneys. Praise the Lord, right? Praise the Lord. We wouldn't have prison. I wouldn't be doing prison ministry. We wouldn't have police. If men were in harmony with the will of God, with his word, with his law, with his character, there'd be no stealing, no robbing, no killing. There'd be no hatred. If Christ, the Prince of Peace, lived in our hearts, we'd have true godly love for our brothers and sisters. Not the love that we have, you know, not the kind of peace that they're talking about. True, lasting peace. If men would embrace God's message, we wouldn't have any of these problems. And God has given us that message. That's our message to give. Matthew chapter 24. We're told, and then many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. You know, you would think that the day that Jesus wrote and spoke these words, that's thousands, two thousand years ago. You would think that with modern science, you know, with the modern technology, that people would change. Our standard of living is much more higher today. You would think that that would be sufficient for us to learn how to get along with each other. No, my brothers. Sin will ruin everything and anything. It, it did it in heaven. Was there poverty in heaven when, when Satan rebelled? Was there poverty? Was there hunger? No. It was perfect para- was there was there perfect paradise in the garden of eden? Yes there was. Sin will destroy everything and anything. Sin is the problem. And and so you would think that we would have learned that lesson by now. Let's throw more money at the social programs. That's not going to solve anything. Let's raise more taxes. That's not going to solve anything. 
Let's enforce the mark of the beast. That's what's going to solve the problems in humanity. That's only going to make things worse. The best thing that we can do is just ruin and make things worse. That's the best we can do. But the best that God can do, God can bring an end to all of this. He can bring an end to this. So we see that what Jesus is describing here, it's not just international problems. It's not just global problems. It's not just the conflicts between the nations. My brothers and sisters, this is happening in your local communities. On your street, it's happening in your streets. You may not see it. It's happening in homes all around us. It's happening in the lives of people all around us. Today's social divisions are not just at the local level. They're everywhere. And unfortunately, as we read, they're not going to be solved. They're not going to get fixed until Jesus comes. When Jesus comes in glory, he will establish a kingdom that will never pass away. Look at this. This came out this year. It says, Putin ally warns NATO of nuclear war. My brothers, we're talking about minutes away of a total destruction of the earth. If man could do it, if Satan was allowed to do it, he would have done it a long time ago. Oh, he would have done it. But Satan is, is being restrained. Wickedness is being held back. For the sake of the righteous who are preaching the everlasting gospel, trying to save souls. And we read here that he's threatening nuclear war. If Russia is defeated in Ukraine, how's, how can Russia, who's developed the largest country in the world, landmass, how can, how can Russia lose to the Ukraine? Come on, my brothers and sisters. How? It's, it's not possible. This is a David versus Goliath. How can Russia lose? Well, it's not Ukraine Russia's worried about. It says, an ally of President Vladimir Putin warned NATO on Thursday that a defeat of Russia to Ukraine could trigger nuclear war. While the head of the Russian Orthodox Church said that the world would end the church, my brothers, what, what kind of churches do we have today? What kind of message are the churches preaching? They're saying that the end is going to come because Jesus is, they're not talking about Jesus. They're not talking about the gospel. It's a, it's, a, it's a political message. The churches are preaching politics. And they're saying that the world's going to end. That's what the church over there is saying. If the West tries to destroy Russia, what kind of message is that? They've, they, they don't know what the gospel is. And that's what the churches are saying over there. You know why? Because they want to be, they want to be in good standing with, with the political authority. And then the ones over here are saying the opposite because they want to be in good with the authorities. They're those people-pleasing, pleasant truth preachers that are going to tell you what they think you want to hear, not what God wants the world to hear. And what God is saying is, listen, they're all in trouble unless we get our lives right with you. And so they're not concerned about Russia or Ukraine it says, such apocalyptic rhetoric is intended to deter the U.S.-led NATO military alliance. That's who they're concerned about. The U.S.-led NATO military alliance. That's who they're afraid of losing to. And they're going to win. And if they, if they can't win, then no one's going to win. And everyone's got to go. They got nothing to lose. My brothers and sisters... And they, they're the, that's the mindset. We're going to bring peace through this kind of action. It's never going to bring peace. But guess what? They said this because on the eve of the meeting of Ukraine's allies to discuss sending Kiev more weapons. They're sending more weapons. They're sending more weapons. Listen to this. This came out also this year. This came out this year. And this is a statement that was made 
from a member of the Council of Europe. What's the Council of Europe? Listen, it's not the European Union. The European Union is an international organization of 27 member states. The Council of Europe has 46 member states. And the Council of Europe was created right after World War II to ensure, yes, we know the United Nations was also created, but there was one in Europe, this one, the Council of Europe. And their mission, their responsibility is to provide peace, to ensure that war doesn't flare up, to defuse these situations. And here we have the German representative. Notice this, German foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock, isn't bashful about laying blame on Russia in the war in Ukraine as the war surpasses 11 months. Notice, Baerbock used a significant portion of her keynote address Tuesday at the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe saying, we are fighting a war against Russia and not against each other. My brothers and sisters, we are officially at war. The world is officially at war. But no, nobody's announced it. They did here. But that's not a real declaration of war. My brothers and sisters, listen, it's a, this is a proxy war at very least. You know what a proxy war is? When you have two people who are contending and then you have all these other nations that are supporting either one or the other fighter, player. And they're sending the weapons, they're sending the tanks. You know, we've sent the weapons. We've sent the bullets. We've sent the air defense missiles. We've sent cruise missiles. We've sent all those. We've sent funding. We've sent the humanitarian aid. They're sending everything. And they're not diffusing. They're not trying to see how we can end this. They're not calling for peace talks. This is Germany. Has, has Germany forgotten what happened in 1945? Have they forgotten 1945? The last time they went to war? It didn't go well for them. It didn't end up good for them. And here we're talking about fast tracking and escalating and aggravating and agitating the situation even more by making statements that we are war. Oh, but it's not just Germany. It's not just Germany. Look what came out February 4. How long ago did that happen? February 4. How long ago was that? That was today, my brother. I can't get you anything more, more, more current than this. You talk about fresh off the press. I can't get you anything more, more current than this. What happened today? Tory MP confirms UK is at war with Russia. That came out today. And this, this is a conservative. We're not blaming anybody. But the, the, even the conservatives are saying this. It says a Tory MP says that we are now at war in Europe and called for the UK to face Russia directly. Conservative Party. Here's another one. This gentleman here has said that the UK is at war in Europe. What, what, what was the purpose of the international organizations like the United Nations, the European Union, NATO, Council of Europe? I mean, how many more organizations do we need to maintain peace? How much more police do we need? How much more in agencies do we need? Brother, you'll never have enough until sin has been resolved in our hearts. How many police do we need? You'll never have enough. You'll need, you'll need one police for every sinner just to maintain peace in this world. Because sin is a problem. Sin has always been the cause of the source of every conflict. You know, I, ha I, I know the secret of who killed JFK. You know who killed JFK? Everybody wants to know who killed JFK. I know. 
You know who it was? It was a sinner. That's who it was. Because sin is a problem for every conflict that has ever started in this world. And it will always be. Because men are not, because we have not just forgotten God, we haven't just abandoned God, we've abandoned His Word and His counsel and the principles of truth that say, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated. They've forgotten all about that. They don't care about any of those things. They don't want to hear about that. Love your neighbor, they don't want to love nobody, they don't even love themselves. In, in a sense where they, they care about their own people and they care about their own nation. If, if we lose, everyone's going to lose. Come on, what kind of attitude? That's, that's kind of what Satan did in heaven. If I can't have it, then nobody can have it. And there was war in heaven. In heaven, my brothers and sisters. How, heaven is God's house. Only good things happen in heaven. Who, who would ever imagine it? In God's presence? War? Yes. So don't expect that these events are not going to happen in this world, in our house. But you know, what's the, the sad part is, we don't have any freedom. We don't have any voice. Who decided this? Did you decide? I didn't decide this. Who's making these decisions? We're not a free people anymore. Yet we may have, you know, these uh, governments that are supposed to represent the people, for the people, of the people, by the people. They're, they're not. We don't decide these things. These things have already been decided for us. And you can read the whole thing. We're not going to read the whole thing. But they're declaring officially we're at war. The world is at war. Here's another one. January 26, it says Trump wars, warns of nuclear war over sending tanks to Ukraine. And here, former President Donald Trump warned Thursday that nukes could come in wake of decision from Western countries to send long-sought tanks into Ukraine. Did we send the tanks? These tanks are sent. UK is sending the tanks. U.S. is sending tanks, and you could read, you could read. It says, uh, President Joe Biden announced Wednesday that the U.S. would send 31 M1A1 Abram tanks. Biden's announcement came shortly after German Chancellor, they were the Germans, they just, they seem to have forgotten, they have amnesia of what happened in 1945. They, they just don't know history. It didn't turn out too good. They sent the tanks because German is sending the tanks. And other countries, look at the last sentence, and other countries also in possession of German-made tanks would be permitted to send tanks. What are they doing, my brothers? Escalating. Escalating a crisis that if God doesn't intervene, if for the sake of the gospel and the preaching of, the, of saving souls, if God didn't intervene, we're talking about the end of the world in a couple of minutes. We're not talking about an hour, minutes, with the speed that these new weapons can travel. Yes, he warned that it's coming. And you know, right now we're saying, well, we're just sending, we're just sending tanks. That's it. We're just sending tanks. It's not a big deal. You know, it was first small arms. Then we send the cruise missiles, and now we're sending tanks. You think they've sent advisors? You think they've sent at least some advisors to advise them? Brother, there's advisors over there. We forgot how the Vietnam War began. It started by, you know, we're just sending advisors and we're sending the aid to help South Vietnam. That's all we're doing. We're not sending soldiers. We're not getting involved. Brothers, that's how it started. That's how it started. What's next? Airplanes? Jets? Oh no, Andy, that's not going to happen. Look at this. January 25, Ukraine will now push for F-16 fighter jets. They're pushing for this now. What's next? Submarines? Warships? 
Send us a nuclear bomb. Send us, send us everything. Listen, my brothers, our world is being dragged. Our world is being dragged into this conflict. And, you know, you can say, Andy, but, you know, nothing's going to... Listen, there are people who are making fortunes off of this crisis. There are actors. There's wealth being transferred at the expense of pain and suffering and misery of other people. There's real cash being made right now. Listen to this. Prophets and Kings 278. The conditions prevailing in society, and especially in the great cities of the nations, what are they doing? What are the conditions? What are the signs of the times doing, my brothers and sisters? What are they doing? It says they proclaim in thunder tones that the hour of God's judgment is come and the end of all things earthly is at hand. What are the signs of the times doing? They're preaching. They're teaching. They're speaking to you. You would know that if you just read Matthew 24. You would know it. If you were just studying Bible prophecy, you would know it. But because many of us, we're not focused on present truth. We're focused on every other thing. Guess what? The events in the world are talking to you. They're speaking to us. They're preaching, not in whisper, not whispers. God is speaking to the world, my brothers and sisters. He's speaking to society. He's speaking to this generation. He's talking to them. And it's our mission to connect the dots and to let people know the end of all things. Jesus is about to come. Why is there a war in Ukraine? Why is there an escalation? Why are these things happening? Because Jesus is about to come. That's the solution. That's the answer. That's the message. That's what these things are pointing to. Conditions of our world are speaking. Notice, well, what, what, what are you talking about? In quick succession, the judgments of God will follow fire, flood, earthquakes with war and bloodshed. Yes, it's, it's the natural disasters. It's the man-made disasters. Yes, those are the conditions. And God is speaking. The question is, are you listening? Are you in tune? Are you hearing? But you know, since many of us don't take the time to watch and pray, listen, God has ways to get the attention of the world. And listen, God has the attention of the world right now. The whole world is focused on the World War III. And you and I have the answer by God's grace through his gospel. We have the solution. For this they are willingly ignorant that by the word of God the heavens were of old. How did the world, how was the world created? How's, the world's ignorant on how the world came into creation. How did it come into creation? By the word of God. God spoke, and it stood fast. It was formed. But guess what? But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. This world's not going nowhere. Even with this escalation, even with the calls of nuclear, even with the climate crisis, the most existential threat, the world's going to end. Yes, even that crisis. And whatever other economic crisis or social crisis, you name the crisis, this world's not going nowhere. This world, according to God, not only did his word create this earth, his word is preserving this earth for a day of judgment. No one's going anywhere. We have a court date. We have, we're going to meet our creator. Let me tell you, you can read you can read Patriarchs and Prophets about the flood. You can read about the flood. The people had to recognize that there was a God in heaven before the flood took them away. Did you know that? You can read. They saw the lightning. They saw the thunder. They saw the waters. They saw everything that God in his mercy had warned them about. She says in the chapter of the flood, they saw their works and their temples destroyed. 
completely. They had to recognize that there's a God. Before the end came to that civilization, they had a, an encounter with their creator. It's not any different today. The world is being preserved for a day of judgment. And what else? Is, what else? This is a sign of the times. This is a sign of the end. In the middle of all the mess and the conflicts, the Bible says that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to the nations, and then the end will come. My brothers and sisters, this is describing a sign, a significant fulfillment of what we see. This is a sign that we're at the end. Along with all the other signs, the preaching of the gospel will be given in every nation. It's happening already. It's happening in our community. We're doing it by God's grace. We're fulfilling our job here. And other people are. By God's grace. This is taking place before our eyes as we speak right now. Now the church. Matthew 24. Is this still Matthew 24? Yes. Is this still the end of times? Yes. Is this still the scenes about the end? Yes. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? We, you, we want to be faithful. We want to be ready when Jesus comes. Who is he? Who are they? It says, who then is a faithful servant who his master will make him ruler? Blessed is the servant whom his master, when he comes, will find him doing. What will they be doing? They'll be watching and they'll be praying always. And they'll be communicating a message, sharing the message to the world. That's who, who's going to be ready when Jesus comes. How about Matthew 24 or 48? Is verse 48 still part of Matthew 24? Yes, it is. Is this still a fulfillment of the end times? Yes. Are these still the signs that will be seen in the last? Yes, it is. Don't be this servant. Don't be this servant. But if the evil servant says in his heart, my master delays his coming. You know who that is? That's those who are just preaching pleasant, happy, everyone's saved. There's nothing happening in this world. Not those who are preaching present truth. Present truth, we're connecting prophecy. We're telling the world Jesus is about to come. And we need to get ready. There's a work of preparation. But if we begin to live like the world and listen and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, when there's no distinction between the church and the world, the same, we're watching and praying for the Super Bowl to come. We can still be friends, okay? I hope we're still friends. Somebody says no. We, whatever the world says, that's what we do. Whatever, the latest movie, that's what we watch. What's, what's playing right now? What's playing? Let me tell you, the great controversy is playing right now. That's what's playing. Jesus is about to come. That's what's about to play. That's what's happening right now. But if, we, if there's no distinction, my brothers and sisters, what's going to happen? Is this a parable? No, this is not a parable. It says... The master of that servant will come in a day which he's not looking for and in an hour that he's not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Don't be this servant. Matthew 25. This is a continuation of the sermon. But his master, his Lord answered and said to him, oh, my brothers and sisters, these are the, the words from the lips of Jesus. Don't be this servant. What kind of servant? You wicked and lazy servant. My brothers and sisters, God has a work that needs to be done in this world. And this is not supposed to be describing his church. But guess what? This is also a sign of the end time that will exist. Unfortunately, it will exist. 
What's going to happen to the slothful, lazy? Verse 30, it says, and cast the... What kind of servant? Unpro- that's, not, that's not a nice thing to say, Jesus. Don't say... That's not Christ-like, to call somebody unprofitable. You know, unprofitable is good for nothing. My brothers and sisters... From the lips of Jesus that can never say a lie, that can never say a mistake, will come the words to those who aren't watching and praying and occupying and preaching and sharing the gospel. Jesus is speaking to us today. Yes, he is. Not just in the signs of the times, but in his word. He's calling us. You know which servant we want to be? You know which ones we want to be? I don't have the scripture here. Does somebody read me Matthew 25, 21. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. We didn't put it on the slide, but somebody read it with a loud voice. Brothers and sisters, we want to be ready for Jesus to come. And when Jesus comes, I don't want to hear Andy, you lazy, slothful, Wicked, unprofitable. We could hear Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. Who has it? Read it, my sister. Hold on. Hold on. We want to get this on the mic. His Lord shall say unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. By God's grace, my brothers, we can hear the words from Jesus. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, my brothers and sisters. We can hear words that we've never heard from anybody in this world. We can hear that our life has been a blessing. God has been using and depending upon me to accomplish his purpose so that he can come and bring an end. My brothers, Peter says we're not just to look for the second coming of Christ but we're to hasten that coming through the preaching of the gospel. We thank you, Lord. Let's pray. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your love, for your protection. Lord, we thank you for speaking to our hearts. We thank you for showing us clearly from your word that uh, our world is not going to continue. We thank you, Lord, that you have made a way of escape. We thank you that you're calling men and women like us to accomplish something great in this world, something great for you and for your cause. Bless your church throughout the world and renew our dedication to help others to realize that time is winding down and that you're about to establish your kingdom of righteousness. We thank you and we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.